The Annunciation. The angel and the girl are met. Earth was the only meeting place, for the embodied never yet traveled beyond the shore of space. The eternal spirits in freedom go. See, they have come together. See, while the destroying minutes flow, each reflects the other's face, till heaven and hers and earth and his shine steady there. He's come to her from far beyond the farthest star, feathered through time. Immediacy of strangest of strangeness is the bliss that from their limbs all movement takes. Yet the increasing rapture brings so great a wonder that it makes each feather tremble on his wings. Outside the window, footsteps fall into the ordinary day, and with the sun along the wall, pursue their unreturning way. Sounds perpetual round about, rolls its numbered octaves out, and hoarsely grinds its battered tune. But through the endless afternoon, these neither speak nor movement make, but stare into the deepening trance as if their gaze would never.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. promise of Jesus. I can almost hear the kids as they come down on Christmas morning excited about Christmas. Maybe they're excited about family members who finally arrived because we can finally get together this year. But I can almost hear those words. But maybe we need to change them a little bit and not talk about who's coming, but God is coming. Not brother or aunt or grandma or grandpa, but God. God is coming. Can you feel that? That excitement? That there is a light that the people in darkness couldn't ignite? That they couldn't inflame and couldn't fabricate? That light you can only find. And it's coming. It's coming like the light behind me. You know, Anne Voskamp writes these words, Christmas can only be found. Christmas cannot be bought. Christmas cannot be created. Christmas cannot be made by hand, lit up, set out, dreamed up. Christmas can only be found. Found in the crash, found in the mire and the stench of those unexpected and only in the dawning of the birth of Jesus. You know, the name of Jesus means God saves. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, the promise of Jesus is that God saves. Who was Jesus? God saves. What did Jesus do? God saves. You see, Jesus wasn't just godly or godlike or God focused. He was God. And he wasn't just a servant of God or an instrument of God or a friend of God. Jesus was God. God saves. It's not that God empathizes or God cares or listens or helps or assists. But Christmas is about God saves. God will save his people from their sin. And Jesus came to save us, not just from politics or enemies or challenges or difficulties. He came to save us from our sins. God saves. That's the promise of Jesus. Because if we could save ourselves, why would we need a Savior? Jesus didn't enter the world to save us. Jesus did not enter the world to save us, save ourselves. He entered the world to save us from ourselves. So how do we prepare for the Savior's coming? Well, our reading today from, from John, or from Luke, actually, I guess, is about Mary. In the Advent, we remember that Mary became a space 
for the Savior. She simply said these words, I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. Mary just became a space for the Savior. The temptation we have at Christmas is that we think we need to produce something, perform something, perfect something. But maybe we simply need to become a place for God to be in us. Because when you are a space, you can receive whatever the will of God is in the moment as simply grace. And in that moment of grace, God will be taking hold of you. Taking hold of your unsure hand, taking hold of your unseen needs, taking hold of your unknown stress. God wants to take hold of you to be with you. Yes, the promise of Jesus is that God wants to be with you. So Mary kneels before us on this first Christmas, not as a woman who is producing, performing, or perfecting, but simply bending before God. And today, we're reminded that we need to be a space for this love to come into us. Maybe the greatest gift is your surrender to be a space for God. How do we surrender? How do we be this space for God, this womb for God? Well, I'm going to challenge you to take five minutes today to make space, to find stillness, and to be silent before God. What do you need to surrender to make space for Jesus, to be a womb for him in your life? Maybe you begin by asking God to fill you with love and grace. The second challenge is, I'd like you to give five minutes of space for someone else and let them fill all of your attention. Who is the one person you need to make space for today? Someone who has been crowded out by the busyness of the season. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said. Maybe your greatest gift is to surrender like Mary as we wind this fourth Sunday or this fourth Advent down, that we simply allow ourselves to be a space for God. Thanks be to God.
Ever faithful God, through prophets and angels, you promised to raise up a holy child who would establish a household of peace and justice. Open our hearts to receive your son that we may open our doors to welcome all people as sisters and brothers and establish in your household in our time. Amen. I actually added one word. May starlight guide your steps toward place of wonder. May angels sing their news as you travel to the manger. May promise fill these days as we watch at the edge of birth. And may faith tell you, Emmanuel will be with us soon in human skin. <laughs>